So far, everything we've done in class is focused on one microcontroller. In this section, we will look at how your microcontroller can communicate with other devices. Just as with people, you may be surprised at how a little networking can make your microcontroller that much more powerful. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how microcontrollers can communicate with the world around them using a peripheral called a serial interface. Now, when we say serial, we're not talking about a popular breakfast item. Rather, we mean serial as in the opposite of parallel. Let's take a quick look at a couple of examples. In serial communication interfaces, data is exchanged one bit at a time in a serial fashion, that is, one thing happening sequentially after another. For example, consider two microcontrollers that are communicating using their serial interfaces. In its simplest form, the serial interface link is comprised of just two wires. If the microcontroller on the left wants to send or transmit information, it sends the data one bit at a time to the microcontroller on the right. Similarly, if the microcontroller on the right wants to send or transmit information, it sends the data one bit at a time to the microcontroller on the left. In a parallel communication interface, data is exchanged 8, 16, 32, or even 64 bits at a time. This allows much higher rates of data transmission, but it can become quite expensive as it consumes a significant amount of digital inputs and digital output pins. Therefore, in general, most microcontrollers will communicate with each other using serial interfaces. In the next video, we will introduce you to a common serial communication interface that is used by microcontrollers, the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Now don't let that big name scare you. It's a relatively straightforward peripheral to use. Thanks for watching.